fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. During the early days of the western United States, ranchers and sheepmen fought constantly over boundaries and water rights. And these disputes might have led to open warfare if it had not been for the masked rider of the plains. He made both parties realize there was room for all and that only through cooperation could the winning of the West be accomplished. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're riding the town biker's ranch. Someone's waiting on the trail ahead. Oh, Silver, away! It was almost midnight. In front of a ranch house whose lighted windows showed that its occupants were still awake, an Indian waited outside with two powerful horses. One a paint, the other pure white. Inside the house, its owner, Tom Barker, stood before a tall, masked figure. The cattleman was speaking, and... I'm glad you told me this. I thought it was something you should know. Yes. It uh, makes it difficult. Difficult? To know what to do. You doubt my identity? No, of course not. I would have recognized you again anyway. Then trust me. Do as I've suggested. I... You'll never regret it. I will. Good. How much time will you need? Give me a week. Well, a week then. We'll say a week from tonight. You can look for me. Yes. Todd and I'll be camped close by. Uh, one moment. I want you to know something. Yes? However this turns out, you'll find me grateful. Don't worry. I think you'll learn my advice was good. Let's go, Tonto. Uh, Come on. Get him up, Scout. Come on, old fellow. Baldy. Oh, Baldy. Call me, boss. Uh, come here. Huh? Tell Fred I want to see him. Uh, no, wait. Ask his wife to come, too. At this time of night? Huh? Gosh, boss, it's midnight. Shucks, they're asleep by now. Look out the window. See? The cabin's dark. Oh, I'm afraid I forgot the time. I guess you did. I'll rouse him, though, if you say it's important. No, let it go. It can wait. I'll see him in the morning. Early the next morning in the cabin that stood close to the ranch house. Ellen. Yes? Come here. Leave your cook and go for a second. What is it, Fred? Well, Mr. Barker's just told me some bad news. Go ahead, boss. Tell my wife about it. Oh, it's nothing as bad as your husband makes out, Ellen. It's just that I'll have to leave for a while. Leave? You mean go on a trip? Yes. A long trip? Well... You don't um... savvy, Ellen. Mr. Barker says the doc told him he's in bad shape. He's got to get away and rest for a while. Maybe for quite a while. Oh, how awful. Oh, it's nothing to worry about. I'm not ready to cash in or anything like that. 
Fact is, I've got a sneaking notion Doc suspected I was looking for a good excuse to take a vacation, so he kind of helped out. But what's the reason? Oh, it's nothing to bother you with. That isn't why I come here. He says while he's gone, I'll have to be in full charge. Oh. Well, you're my foreman. If I can't put you in charge, who can I? You mean... You mean Fred's to run everything? Yes, he'll have to. Doc's given me my orders, and I'm to get away and not even think about business. But... But I thought Mr. Loftus wanted to... <laughs> oh, Fred can uh, attend to that. Fred, that's something I wanted to speak about. Uh-huh. Loftus said uh, he'd be back next month to settle this. If he can't get here, he'll send someone to represent him. You'll uh, wait till then before leaving, huh? No, that's just it. I can't. So I'll have to trust you to handle things. Well... Uh... It won't be difficult. Tell Loftus I absolutely won't sell the ranch. With conditions the way they are, he couldn't afford to pay me enough to meet my obligations, and uh, I wouldn't ask it. Sure. I will sell a strip across my property, however, if that will satisfy him. He can have a strip uh, across the south section. I'll mark it for you later. It's enough to serve his purpose. It will connect his east and west range, and he won't ever have to worry that I'll attempt to block his drive. He can send his sheep either way as often as he likes, as long as they're kept to that strip. Understand? Uh-huh. But he ain't gonna like it. He'll have to. I won't make any other terms. It would ruin me to. I wasn't thinking of that so much. Well? You said you might be gone for as long as five or six months, didn't you? It's possible. Well, he won't wait that long. Even providing he's willing to take what you're willing to sell, he, he can't wait. And that ain't all. No? If I know that fella, he won't be willing to take his sheep across on my say-so that you'll sell the strip when you get back. He don't trust nobody. He don't know but what you might let him get his woolies across, then tell him you won't sell and refuse to let him make the drive back. Then he'd be stranded there. You have his sheep in a pocket and you can hold him up for anything you wanted. I don't intend to hold him up. Oh, sure not. I'm just telling you how he'll figure. Well, that can be fixed. Yeah? How? Easily. Before I go, I'll give you my power of attorney. You can make the sale. With the power of attorney, it'll be just as legal as if I made the sale myself. <laughs> have you anything against that? Why... I guess not. You don't think I'm asking too much of you, do you? Oh, sure not. Very well, then. We'll consider it settled. Well, gosh, I don't know. What's the matter? Well, aren't you trusting me pretty far? I mean, after all, with a power of attorney like that, I could... <laughs> Sell me out? Well, I guess we won't worry about that. How about it, Ellen? You think I should? Mr. Barker, if we couldn't be trusted after all you've done for us, we'd... We'd be the most ungrateful people alive. <laughs> and if I didn't think you were, you wouldn't be here. Well, that's enough for now. There'll be other things, but I won't leave until the end of next week and there's time to settle them. I'll have your power of attorney in a day or two. Better get over to the bunkhouse pretty soon, Fred. I want the boys out early today. Uh, what? Oh, sure, Mr. Barker, sure. That's all, then. Fred. Fred. Huh? What is it? What's wrong? Wrong? When, when Mr. Barker went out, the way you looked at him... What's the matter with the way I looked at him? You looked as though... As though... Well? Oh, Fred, if I didn't know better, I thought you hated him. Exactly a week from the night of his first talk with Tom Barker, the Lone Ranger, accompanied by his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, drew rain before the ranch house for the second time. Oh, oh, there's Silver. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Wait, Kimasabi. I won't be long this time. Uh -huh. You wait. I was washing for you. Get inside. You've made your arrangements? Everything's ready. Here. I've written full instructions. They're in this envelope. Fine. I, uh, this man you mentioned... He can be trusted? You have my word for it. That's all I ask. And when do you leave? Tomorrow. You're worried? I, I know I shouldn't Didn't be. Didn't I tell you not to worry? I know, but so much depends but on this. if I thought there was that... a chance of failure, I'd never have suggested it. Oh, I have confidence in you, but... But you're the... still worried, huh? Well, I can't blame you, but I won't let you down. I'm leaving. I'll have to give this to Tato and get him started. And I'll hear from you? When I judge the time is right, I can't say when. Adios. Tato, uh -huh. take this envelope. Uh -huh. He got him. Ride fast. Find Porter no matter where he is. And tell him to act according to the instructions he'll find in there without fail. How to do it. Now on your way. Uh, get him up, Scout. Get him up. Yep. All right, old boy. 
back to camp. Come on, Silver. I am Silver. Away! <laughs> The following day, Tom Barker said his farewells and made his departure. For almost three weeks, work went on at the ranch in his absence, exactly as if he had been there. Then, late one afternoon, a stranger drew rein in front of Fred Mason's cabin. Oh, boy. Oh, there. Oh. Oh, howdy. Uh, Mason? Uh-huh. Step in. Oh, uh, Thanks. I'm John Siegel. Yeah? Oh, I don't suppose you've heard of me, but I represent Clay Loftus. Oh, Loftus sent you, huh? Here, sit down. Uh, no, thanks. I'll stand. I'm in rather a hurry. Uh-huh. I suppose you know why I'm here. I guess so. Mr. Loftus is busy. He couldn't get here. I represent him. Sure. Now, I've been told that Mr. Barker is gone, but that uh, he left you with authority to do business for him while he's absent. Uh, is that right? It is. He gave you power of attorney? Uh-huh. I wonder if I could see it. Oh, I don't doubt your word, of course, but uh, naturally I'd have to make sure. Tell her why you can. Just wait a second. There, uh, here. Take a look. Uh, seems in order. Sheriff witnessed it. You can check with him if you want. Oh, no, this is sufficient. Uh, I notice this gives you blanket authority. Huh? I mean, there are no restrictions. You have full power to dispose of the property in any way you see fit. I guess so. But the boss told me what he wanted done. Yes, and what was that? Loftus can have a strip across our south section. And that's all. You have absolute instructions to that effect? I have. Yeah, that's too bad. Mr. Loftus hoped to purchase the entire ranch. It would permit him to consolidate his holdings. Paying current prices, huh? Oh, naturally. Well, that's what the boss won't have. He bought this place during boom times, you know. If he sold now, it'd clean him. Hmm. Mr. Loftus is very anxious to get this property. Yeah, we knew that before. Look, Mason, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. I uh, hope you won't be offended. Yeah? It's rather awkward, but it's important. Mason, just how much loyalty do you feel you owe Barker? Huh? I mean, would you... Well, do you feel as though nothing could persuade you to sell a place against Barker's orders? He's told me what to do. Of course, but after all, holding his power of attorney, you, you can sell, you know. What if I can? Well, uh, you might find it quite uh, profitable. I savvy. Offering me a bribe, huh? Oh, there's no need to call it that. Uh, let's say a bonus from Mr. Loftus showing his uh, appreciation. Mister, you can go to blazes. Now, wait. Loftus uh... couldn't give me a two-bit piece. But and you can tell him so for me. Mason, can you afford to turn down $5,000? He'd tell you he could go that high? He did. He must want the place even more than I thought. He has to have it, Mason. And no mere strip of land is going to satisfy him. Now, you know and I know that one day this is all going to be sheep range. Cattle are through in this district. Anybody who won't admit that is a fool. And anyone who fights it will get the licking his foolishness deserves. If you sell now, it will be only what Barker himself will have to do later on. Who said I wouldn't sell? But, but just now... You ask me if I wanted a bribe or a bonus or whatever you'd like to call it for going to get orders. Well, you can take your bribes and go jump in the river. But I, I wouldn't take a crooked dollar now or any other time. But I'll sell. You bet I'll sell. And Loftus can name his own price. I, I don't understand. Why should you? But if you have nothing to gain by it... Siegel... Have you ever heard of someone hating a fellow so bad he'd wait years to get even? I, I, I don't know that I have. Well, you're looking at one. But I still... I've been here ten years. When I first come, I was just a kid. I, I worked hard. There wasn't a thing I wouldn't do to get Barker to trust in me. <laughs> I even got hitched so he'd figure I was one of the steady, dependable kind. I, I don't know what to say. Ain't nothing you need to say. I've got what I wanted. I'm where just by signing my name to a piece of paper, I can clean him out. I can finish what I've waited ten years for. You, you will sell? Every blasted acre. And the sooner the better. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Two days later, in an office in town... Now then, you've had a chance to look over the papers? You're satisfied that everything's in order? Quite. Mason? Mason, I ask oh. if you... Oh, uh, sure, they're all right. Very well. Now, if you'll sign, you'll have them witnessed, and I won't have to trouble you anymore. Uh, you sign, Siegel. Oh, of course. There. There you are, Mason. Uh-huh. Here, the pen. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Well, aren't you going to sign? I, uh... You said you'd sell, didn't you? Have you changed your mind? Oh, I reckon I ain't. Well, put your signature to that. Yeah, sure. Is that all? That's all. Mr. Siegel, permit me to congratulate you. You bought a splendid ranch. Contrary to custom, when Fred returned home, he did not go to work. Instead, he remained within the cabin. Later, he sat down to the meal his wife prepared, but made no effort to touch the food. He said little in response to Ellen's efforts to make him talk. As soon as he could, he left the table and went to the window, where he stood scowling out at the gathering dusk. He wasn't conscious of his wife's approach until he felt her hand on his arm. Fred. Huh? What's gone wrong today? Uh. Please, Fred. What makes you think anything has? Dear, don't you think I know when something's troubling you? You didn't eat. You've scarcely said a word. You've just sat around since you got home. And... Fred, is that it? Did something happen in town? Nothing I didn't mean to happen. What was it? Nothing. Fred, tell me. Oh, you wouldn't be interested. You don't want to tell me? I said it was nothing. Fred, listen to me. Well? Don't, don't you know what it does to me when there's something wrong and you won't tell me? Uh-huh. It, it just makes me sick inside. Fred, listen to me. It does. I worry so for you. I'm so proud of you, and I want things to be so fine for us. And when you get like this, it, it frightens me. I, I get so terribly frightened. Oh, I, don't you pay no attention to me. I, I can't help it. I... Ellen. Yes? I, I was just standing here thinking. What, Fred? You like it here? Been happy, have you? Oh, I have. Ain't so bad at that. I don't know anyone who could have been as kind to us as Mr. Barker. He's been wonderful. It could have been worse, I reckon. Fred, how can you say it like that? Well, look at all the things he's done for you. How many other men your age are there who could be trusted like you've been? Don't you remember when he made you foreman? Why, you were almost the youngest man he had. Mm -hmm. Kind of forgot that. He built this cabin for us. Yeah. And you know there isn't a thing he wouldn't give you if you asked him. Of course, you've earned it. I know that. <laughs> Fred. Huh? Is that it? Are you thinking of leaving? Do you want to quit? I... Is that it? I don't know. Oh, you can't. You can't. You'd never get another place as good as this. Maybe. Oh, you know you couldn't. I may have to. What? Fred, what is it? Tell me. You've got to tell me. I... Please, please... Blast it, Ellen, we've got to leave. And I've just found out I don't want to. But why do you... I've been the biggest fool there ever was. What do you mean? There's just, just one man alive can help me. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had made camp within a few miles of the Barker Ranch House. And later that same evening... Tonto. Oh. Uh-huh. Hear that? The horseman. Oh. Uh, him come this way. Right. I wonder what you think. We'll see if it's Mason. He knows where our camp is. I saw to that. How you do it? I let him catch sight of me one day. He followed, and I pretended I wasn't aware of it. I don't think there's any doubt he knew who I was. Uh-uh. But if he did, this may be what we've been waiting yeah. for. Come on. Get, up. get back in the shadows. If it's not him, you can take a hand if you need it. Don't do it. Hello there. Oh, 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 oh boy. Stranger. Uh, well? I, I've got to talk to you. Go on. I, I trailed you one day, though I reckon you never knew it. And what of it? Didn't I hear you call that white horse over there Silver? Possibly. Why? Have you got a redskin pard named Tonto? I have. Then you're the one. Stranger, I need help, and I need it bad. Fred, 
Ted, it looks to me as though you've made a mess of things. I reckon I have. Didn't you ever tell Tom Barker you believed him responsible for your brother's death? Didn't you even give him the opportunity to tell his side of it? Nope. Didn't it occur to you that someday he might find out your real name? Well, that was just one of the chances I figured I had to take. Stranger, there's no use lecturing me. I know I done wrong. It took you long enough to find it out. Well, this was the first chance I ever had to do what I'd set out to do. And now that you've done it, you're not so proud of yourself, huh? Stranger, I feel like dirt. How about your wife? You told her your story? Never till today. I guess it was Ellen that opened my eyes as much as anything else. What did she say? Well, that's the worst of it. Yes? She didn't even get mad. She just said she'd always be for me, no matter what. She's a fine woman. Yeah, tied to a skunk. Not necessarily. There are men who would have said nothing about a thing like this. What'll I do? What do you want to do? Why, well, fix things up before Mr. Barker gets back, of course. Get the ranch back? Sure. It was so legally, wasn't it? Yeah, but there must be... And some... there's nothing you can do but to look up this man Siegel and attempt to persuade him to sell you the ranch back. Well, he was just acting for Clay Loftus. And so you said. But don't you savvy? He wouldn't sell the place again for twice the cash. And I haven't got money enough to make up the difference, even if he would. Then it looks as though the ranch is his to keep. You, you mean you won't help? You haven't suggested a way in which I can help. I thought you was a lone ranger. Well? They say you can do anything. You shouldn't believe all that you're told. But I was sure you'd help. Were you? Blasted, I don't believe you're the Lone Ranger at all. He wouldn't turn a fellow down who was in trouble. Did I claim to be the Lone Ranger? You dirty crook. Don't reach. You said your horse was called Silver. You let me think the Redskin's name was Tonto. You just led me on to tell him the whole rotten story. Well, someday I hope you pay for it. Here. What do you think you're going to do? Well, if nobody else can help me, I'll help myself. Get up. Get up there. Him ain't mad, poor fellow. And I hated treating him that way. Uh, but when he came to see me, he was hoping to get out of that scrape the easy way. Mm. And he won't deserve help until he's shown he's willing to face the consequences. Here, Silver. What we do? We follow. Call, Scout. Uh, here, Scout. Yep. We'll keep in sight. But I don't think there's any question of where he's going. Ready? Uh -huh. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Come on. <laughs> You have to do it. You've got to sell back the ranch. It's got to be in Mr. Barker's name again before he comes home. How many times do I have to tell you no before you believe I mean what I say? But Siegel, you... It's no concern of mine what happens to you. Let me remind you that you could have got $5,000 out of this. That would have taken you as far as you wanted to go and provided for you nicely besides. But you turned it down of your own accord. So you'll have to get along now as well as you're able. But I don't want to leave. I just want to stay here. That's why things have got to be squared before Mr. Barker shows up. You're just wasting my time on your own. That's your last answer? Yes. And blast you out. Drop that gun. What? Quickly. Why, you can and take it. Oh! You always try to shoot your way out of trouble, Mason? My hand, you, you smashed Your it. hand wasn't touched. You'll be all right in a moment. Now answer my question. I had to do something. So your solution was to shoot Siegel here and let the sheriff solve your problems with a rope. I wouldn't have shot him. I was just going to run a bluff. Which would have got you nowhere. But I have to... How far are you willing to go to straighten things out? I'd do anything. Then you've got one chance. Go to the sheriff. Tell him your story. As it is, you have no grounds in which to cancel the sale. But if you convince the sheriff that you schemed for years to ruin Barker, that would be a different matter. I think it would get your results. I... I'd be jailed. Right. Ain't there no other way? Can you think of one? Well, I... And I... now that you've got yourself into this trouble, haven't you the courage to take your medicine? You think I haven't? I'm just wondering. All right. All right. You can wonder what you please. I'll show you. Will he go to the sheriff? I think he will. Fred's rage left him long before he reached the office of the sheriff. But his resolve to make a confession carried him to the door in spite of the fact it meant arrest. Sheriff. Oh, good evening, Fred. Come in. <laughs> in fact, I've been expecting you. Huh? Oh, just thought you might drop in is all. Well, what's on your mind? Sheriff. Yeah? Uh, I'm a crook. Huh? <laughs> That's a good one. Come in to give yourself up, huh? <laughs> well, what'll the charge be? Been holding up stages? <laughs> you needn't laugh. I mean it. Now, hold on. Just wait till I tell you. You'll see. Don't go, Nine. That's enough, Mason. You again. 
Come in, Tom. Mr. Parker and Siegel, what in... Gosh, I thought you fellas weren't never going to show up. Fred almost told me more than I wanted to hear. It's all right, Sheriff. We'll take over. Where'd you come from? I thought you'd... I've never been any further away than the next county, Fred. But you said you were going to leave I know that I was ill, but I'm not. He told you that at my suggestion. But I I don't... You're all right, Mason. Forget what you've gone through. Well, I can't... Fred, listen to me. You don't have to explain a thing. Several weeks ago, the masked man came to me and explained that he'd learned your real identity. He thought under the circumstances I should know it. But nevertheless, he had faith in you. Enough faith so that he convinced me that I should put you to the test. You, you've you known about me all the time? Yes. And as for your brother, well, I'm sorry you didn't see fit to tell me who you were at the very first. If you had, a dozen men could have told you I wasn't responsible for his death. The sheriff among them. It was an accident. I can give you the details any time. But if you knew, why didn't you say so? Because then I'd never known whether you would be trusted or not. You see, Fred, I won't live forever. I have no family, and uh, I'd grown to like you. I thought that, well, it seemed to me you'd be the man to get the ranch someday. Now it's gone. No. But I sold it. To me. What? Siegel was in my employ. He had no connection with the Loftus, whatever. So the result was that you sold me my own ranch and no harm done. And the masked man planned it all? Even to getting Siegel to help me. Well, I'll be doggone. (laughs) I think from now on we'll understand each other, Fred, on a real basis of trust. Then then the masked man was the Lone Ranger after all. Of course. And I told him... Where's he got to? Gone. And I never even thanked him. Thanks weren't necessary, Fred. He knew you better than you knew yourself. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.